What's going on everyone? Welcome to the epic episode 5 recap of Big Brother Canada season 2. Arissa's dress was tight. I mean so tight that she couldn't move. Okay, forget about Arissa. Let's cut right to the chase. We pick up where we left off in yesterday's episode, the Divergent POV competition. We find out that Paul took himself out of the competition and Kenny has won the POV. I have never seen four dudes get so excited for a music CD. Yeah, after the POV competition, Arlie, Kenny, John, and Andrew head up to the HOH room, and Andrew gets the Divergent soundtrack, and the guys all huddle up and cheer. Kenny, Arlie, and Andrew solidify the plan, which is Netta comes down and Kyle goes up on the block. Alright, the War Room 3 gets a little bit more camera time before they find out which one of them gets to enter the house. Scott dresses up as Contessa, his alter ego, and basically Nate the Great just couldn't handle it. It's crazy how a person can transform themselves into someone completely different. I mean, look at this. Kenny thinks about his veto ceremony in the backyard, thinking about the two nominees, but we all know what the plan is and he follows through. Kenny did give Netta and Paul an opportunity to talk, and I completely expected Paul to continue being a prick by saying something like, I got nothing to say. But he basically said that Kenny deserved the win and he has the right to do whatever he wants that benefits him. Kenny uses the veto on Netta and Andrew of course puts up Kyle as the replacement nominee. Paul wanted to shake Andrew's hand and Andrew straight up said no. I'm not shaking your hand. I love it. I gotta say, I'm a fan of Kyle's now. It took some time. I really thought he was that typical gym rat. But he's done some cool things in the house, and praying with Adele is one of them. Adele prays five times a day in the house, and Kyle wanted to try it out. So Adele taught him all the words and movements, and it was, it was really cool to see. The best quote of the day goes to John for saying, He's not a tool. He's a full box of tools. He's a toolbox. That person he is talking about is Andrew. As Matthew McConaughey would say, Alright, alright, alright. John might be hanging out a lot with Andrew, Arlie, and Kenny, but it looks like it's all fake. Well, at least with Andrew it is. He tells Netta this, and Netta also doesn't like Andrew. Netta says whatever Sabrina is doing is all for her game and that she doesn't actually have a crush on Andrew. They also mention that they really like Kyle, and they would rather keep Kyle in the house since he is Andrew's biggest threat. The segment between Paul, Kyle, and Adele was pretty funny. They called themselves the Outsiders, and they said they should start a TV show called Live with Paul. On Live with Paul, they talked about things not to do in the Big Brother house, and one of those things is to not call someone a racist. It was pretty cool to see those three guys really having some fun. Most of the house guests were chilling by the hot tub, and Sarah noticed Kyle was by himself. So, she decided to sit beside him, and they talked for a bit. It seemed like they bonded, and slowly but surely, Kyle is gaining trust in the other house guests. Could he actually stay over Paul? I'm crossing my fingers. We've reached the halfway point in the episode and the voting is about to begin. In case you missed it, John had a shoulder slinky around him and no one mentioned why. But I know why. His shoulder actually popped out when he was swimming. There might be a bit more to it, but I heard he was in a lot of pain. Alright, back to the vote. By a vote of 9 to 1, Paul, you are safe. Kyle, you have been evicted. <laughs> no! I thought it would have been a lot closer, and surprisingly, John and Netta did not vote to evict Paul. The only vote against Paul was from Adele. It's really sad to see Kyle go. Kyle's goodbye speech was the most Canadian thing you could have ever heard. Time for the HOH competition. In the HOH competition, Arissa will ask a question, and the house guests will either have to step up for fact or step down for rumor. I don't know if this is the first time ever in Big Brother history, but Arissa told Paul to step up or down and he didn't do anything, so she eliminated him. I get it, that's his plan to keep stirring the pot, but at least choose one and play it out. Let me know if this actually isn't the first time it's happened. Netta and Rochelle were the next to be eliminated, followed by Adele, Heather, and John. The final five house guests were Kenny, Sarah, Sabrina, Aika, and Arlie, and on the next question, one person chose rumor, which was the correct answer, and the rest chose fact. So who's your new HOH? It's Aika. I'm happy. I really wanted a girl to win HOH, so this should be an interesting week, especially if Allison gets in the house. 
Okay, here we go. The War Room 3. Allison thinks Scott is going in, and Scott thinks Nate is going in. So, who's actually going in? Well, from 200,000 votes, the person going in is... Not Nate. Not Scott. It's freaking Allison. Yeah, baby. Before Allison goes in the house, though, Arissa has to set some ground rules for her. Allison can make up any story on why she's late in entering the house, and she is not allowed to tell the house guests about the secret room and that she has been watching them. If she spills the beans, she will be evicted immediately from the house. Arissa cannot stress enough that Allison cannot mention the secret room. I wonder if it will be used again later on in the season. Okay, the lame Canadian Secret Service guy is back, but at least Allison isn't blindfolded, so it's not uncomfortable to watch. Allison enters the house, and it looks like all the house guests are still in the backyard. She basically walks around the place, sits down for three seconds, gets back up, sits down for three seconds, gets back up, and here we go. The curtain is going up, and the house guests freak out when they see someone inside, and Allison played it perfectly. She's like, what? You guys are here already? And Kenny has this huge WTF face, and he's like, uh, yeah, we've been here for two weeks. And everyone is asking her if she's staying, and the episode ends. What an ending. If that doesn't get you shaken in your boots for the next episode, then I don't know what will. Make sure to click the thumbs up below, comment on what you thought about my recap and the episode itself, and don't forget to subscribe. I can't wipe this smile off my face. Thank <laughs> you.